You're listening to the Monday Night Roundtable. For the next two hours, we'll talk local high school sports with the voice of the Oneida Indians, Tim Smith. Richter close to the goal line. Touchdown, Indians! Jaden Richter, 15-yard touchdown run. The voice of the Scott Highlanders, Rick Keaton. Got him, got him, got him. Up the sideline, and a cold field player gives that 40 yards behind the boom, boom, boom. Broadcast live from El Rey and Oneida, you're invited to be a part of the show. Produced by the IH Sports Network, the roundtable begins now. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the IH Sports Roundtable, the IH Sports Network Roundtable. From El Rey and Oneida, I'm Ben Garrett, alongside the voice of the Indians, Tim Smith, the voice of the Highlanders, Rick Keaton, and this is episode number three as we continue to rock right along through this high school football season. Oneida and Scott High both coming off of games on uh, thir- well Thursday and Friday night. On Thursday, Oneida defeated Oliver Springs in a surprisingly close game, 13-10, to and then Scott High struggled with Austin East, 24-6. to Guys, let's jump right into it, and Rick, we're going to switch things up a little bit this week and jump to you first. Uh, the first two weeks of the season, Scott High started off strong in the first quarter, and then the second quarter, they kind of got away from them. This week, I guess you could say they started off strong because they gambled, went for the onside kick, they recovered it, and Nolan Cotton fell on the ball. Uh-huh. Scott had the ball on the, on the Austin East side of the 50, but things just never went well after that, and uh, Austin East really ran over Scott High in the first half. Things got better in the second half, but what did you see from Scott High on Friday night? Well, when we were doing the round table last week, Coming off the South Door game, I thought, you know, there's no way that Austin East would be a stronger team than South Door. That's, I think, in anybody's mind, you would think that. But against Austin East, we couldn't get offensive continuity. Um, we couldn't run the ball. Uh, Brady Strunk could had a tremendous job previously at South Door of being able to break out of the pocket and extend our drives some. We didn't extend drives. Uh, it's Penalties are not killing us. Turnovers are not killing us. It's moving the ball, getting in scoring position, and getting into the end zone, and then coming back and sort of letting our defense see if we can hold uh, hold up against the uh, other team, the other opponent. Uh, and it's not – I don't think that our defense played that well Friday, or that bad Friday night. It's the fact that we seem to always be on the field, our defense speaking. We're always on the field. Uh, we slowed – Austin East down a lot. Uh, it's true they had some injuries. We had some injury problems. But to find the continuity and the big stat, if I'm correct looking at this, uh, we completed just five of 23 pass attempts. And not being accurate, maybe receivers catching the ball or giving up on the ball. Uh, while Coach Harris wants to be run first, you run first and he then – wants to be 50 percent pass so that is a big thing for the Highlanders to work on and to find that uh, accuracy within our passing game and that was a big thing and you know, Brady Strunk was the player of the week the first two weeks of the season so what I'm about to say is not a shot against the senior right. quarterback he's played very well this season Friday night though the passing game was not there and it was it was all around there were drop balls there were overthrown balls there were you know just Coach Harris talked at halftime about his receivers being a little bit lackadaisical running mm-hmm. their routes and not running fast enough and getting open. It was just a complete breakdown of the passing game on Friday night. Defensively, though, Scott High struggled in the first half somewhat. Austin East able to pop some big holes, get a lot of running room. In the second half, Scott High was able to take that away. What was the difference in the first half and the second half? Well, I think the, the main difference is we got to halftime without it being out of hand, out of reach. You know, trailing just at that time 16 to nothing. And they split each team up. I went down to the dressing room. Hey, the offensive team was in the west end, uh, west end of the field house. The defensive team was in the east end. I mean, they kept them split up there like that. And the coaches talking to each group. So when they came back out, I think the focus then reverted back to we think we can hold the passing game, so we gamble a little bit. We sent linebackers, we sent others, and we got a good, I think, push up front. And I think that changed the momentum a lot. And But our defense still just, you know, they gave up uh, not that many points. They gave up just enough points that I felt like, you know, we could have a f- good fourth quarter. 
and still come back. He would have taken three touchdowns, but still come back and been able to make it a close game or possibly win over the Roadrunners. And Austin East, by the way, that was their first one of the season. But one thing Austin East has always got, they've got athletes all over the field. Mm -hmm. The big thing that stood out to me from the second Austin East got off the bus on Friday night, their quarterback was huge. And Scott Hines an undersized football team. And they were, that guy, there was a few times he took a lick and just kept on going. Right. And uh, so I, I don't want to take anything away from Austin East. I think they got a better football team than their record would indicate. Well, you have to look at who they have played, too, and that's a big factor. The other thing, and I'm going to mention it right now, is we continue to have some poor tackling. I mean, we get an arm out, we grasp a jersey, but one player trying to hold that uh, six foot, 220 pound quarterback or running back in check. The rest of the team has to get there, and we've got to do a lot of game tackling to the point. And the question you just asked, we did better in the second half of getting to the ball and helping each other defensively. So, uh, if I'd asked you this question at halftime on Friday night, your answer may have been a little bit different than it will be now. We'll see. Maybe I'm putting you on the spot a little bit. Maybe. I think we all felt like coming off of the game against South Dole that Scott took a lot of steps forward from game one to game two how do you feel from game two to game three any steps forward from game two to game three and what does this team still have to work on besides obviously the tackling well i do not feel that we gained anything um i only say we took took a step back but against south door we gained 420 yards offense against austin east we gained 194 yards so half of our production fell off uh so we're not putting any pressure on the other team to get down in a scoring position, uh, putting points on the board, you know, like I say, send the pressure to them to have to equal our scoring. So that didn't work out very well. And I just mentioned our tackling. Um, we can play some clean, good basketball, or <laughs> basketball, football, rather. Like I said. He's fast-forwarding to November yeah. already. I've not checked out yet, but, I, I mean, my mind skips to that, I guess. But, you know, penalties – they're not, they're not drilling this. They're not – cost a lot 55 yards in penalties. That's not much. Didn't cost a lot of field position. Um, the turnovers, another game we didn't turn over the ball. Uh, I don't think our offense is turned over the ball maybe one time. Uh, we muffed two kicks against Coldfield. That gave them great position. But as far as our side um, – our offense has to do something to get the defense a little break, get them off the field. And I think the offense needs – that's the pick-me-up. The whole team needs that pick-me-up so that we can feel very good about ourselves and compete against the teams that, that we should be. Um, you know, we've played our three games right now, and it's not imposing. Cofield's 4-0, South Doors 2-2, Austin East is 1-3. Uh, you know, those are not imposing teams. And I look at the next bunch of games that we've got coming up. Carter this week, one and three. Pigeon Forge, one and three. You've got Gibbs, good football team. Clay County, great, uh, ranked in the top ten single A team. you got Fulton sitting there at one and three. Then GP and Anderson County. I mean, so I think that there are chances to win games, but we got to believe it. And Coach Harris has, as one thing we talked about after he got hired, we have to change the culture and how we change the culture. It's not having good practice and everything. It's converting good practices on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday into wins on Friday night. At some point, you got to win. Got to win. All right. Let's swing, on over, swing it over to you, Tim Smith, and talk about Oneida Thursday night. You talked to Coach May in, in the postgame Thursday night about not apologizing for an ugly win. It's kind of like Tennessee on Saturday night. You and I talked about that a minute ago. You never apologize for a win, no matter how you feel like that you could have done something better. And I think the way Coach May put it was maybe we didn't play well and maybe I didn't coach well, but a win is a win. And Oneida found a way to get a win against Oliver Springs. Talk about Oneida and that tough, tough game against Oliver Springs. Well, <clears throat> Particularly Oliver Springs, um, you know, I, I, Rick was just talking about the records of the teams that Scott has played in these first couple of weeks coming in, and, and Oneida has yet to play a team that has a win when they meet meet up with them. Uh, you know, yeah, Williamsburg, it was game one, mm -hmm. and so they were 0-0, but every team that has played them so far has not been in the winning column. Oneida's 2-2 two and two right now. That's going to change this coming week in a, in a drastic way, but... Um, I, I'm not a coach at all. I'm just a casual observer that uh, 
uh, that is very confused when I look at Oneida right now. Just, I mean, I'm very pleased to be two and two. Don't get me wrong. Um, but you look at these games, and it's just so strange because I don't think that Oliver Springs is the quality opponent that Williamsburg is. Yet here we are. Uh, you know, it's it's a it's a game that's just tight down the stretch. And sometimes you hear about playing up to or down to the competition. I guess we'll see if that's the case. I mean, a lot of questions that I have are going to be answered this week, I think. I think a lot of questions about Oneida get answered this week. You know, people have uh, thoughts and, and observations. And, and, and this week tells the tale about, about what a lot, that, a lot of that looks like. If you stop every uh, game we've had so far, the four games, if you stop them at the four-and-a-half-minute mark of the fourth quarter, we're 4-0. and So, I mean, you had two – uh, games there at the beginning when uh, you wondered, well, is it going to be tough to hold a late lead? Is this going to become a pattern? Well, it hasn't. And in fact, against Wartburg and Oliver Springs, holding that late lead has been kind of the signature of those wins. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to hearing from uh, Oneida's defensive coordinator later tonight, Mark Martin, because uh, you look at that game Friday night and the defense really, uh, if you're going to assign uh, – some concern there they broke down or if, if you want to call it a breakdown or they gave up two points uh you know if you want to look at it that way other than that uh you have the safety which is not uh defensively surrendered the touchdown that was scored yes it was scored against the defense but they started at the three uh and and so you know uh, the defense has been strong the defense has done, done a good job in saying that the defense has given up a lot of yards and the defenses have trouble getting off the field and the defense has a lot of new starters that are learning their way. And watching some game tape about uh, Oliver Springs this past week and seeing what York likes to do. Uh, I, and if, if Mark wants a heads up on a question, I'm, I'm curious about controlling the sweep, uh, you know, getting to the edge. Last year, we didn't let York do it. Uh, York still wants to do that. I watched them against Monterey earlier this year. And, and they really had a field day against the Wildcats getting to the edge. The Indians struggled with that against Oliver Springs. So um, if he's sleeping at all this week, uh, when, during his time when he's awake, I think Coach Martin's thinking about uh, Miles Lefew, the quarterback for York, in that running game getting to the a edge, and what is it going to take to stop that? I think that um, – you know, games aren't won on paper, and that's a good thing because statistically, Oneida is as, as weird as this is for as per usual for me, for me watching Oneida. We are uh, in the deficit in almost all categories down the line with the opponent this year. The two and two record looks like a, it's a very fortunate thing when you look at uh, yards total net offense. Opponents have 929. Oneida has 803. The um, the scoring has gone in Oneida's favor. That's what I'm talking about, bending, not breaking. Oneida's got 80 points. Opponents have 57. Time of possession. That's really, really the most jarring stat here. When you look at a 48-minute high school football game, the opponents have held the football for basically 34 minutes, 35 minutes of that football game consistently against Oneida. That's that's a four-game average, 35 minutes. 34, 35 minutes of 48 minutes of football. Yards per play, exactly the same for both teams. It's 4.6. So it's going to be a, a, a question of can you maintain possession of football? Can you convert those third downs? Right now, Onada is 28% on third downs. So offensively, I think that's your concern. Part of that comes with down and distance. What kind of third downs are you trying to convert? Uh, you know, we've converted we converted a third and 38 the other week, uh, two weeks ago, to make it a touchdown, right? So uh, you take that one away, that third and 38, that's highly unlikely, and your 28% drops. So the Indians have found the end zone on a couple of big plays. Same play, uh, Coach May told us, it flipped side to side. One week it was Colton Darty. This last week, Tate West and uh, Mark Matthews robbed him of the player of the game. I'm just kidding. Uh, Elijah's <laughs> coming later. Elijah, did a good, he earned it for sure. Uh, but uh, – I just have to give that dig if Mark's not going to come here and defend himself. So uh, the the uh, the play, there's been a couple of big plays. But outside of that, the offense has not looked the same. But again, if you look at the uh, 
if you just want to look at that and say, what is the cause? As you asked me before the game, before the, the broadcast tonight, I can't say definitively this is the cause, but I do know there's several new members learning their roles and uh, on the offensive and defensive line, and I think the coaches uh, have won two games and been right into other games despite trying to, to sort that out. To win this week, that has to be sorted out much better than it has been so far because uh, I think Williamsburg is a very high-quality opponent. I think York – is a very high quality opponent and uh, I'm glad we're at home yes and and uh, you know I think that that it's going to be it's going to be a key uh, to look at first quarter look at those first drives see how this thing uh, plays out see if somebody gets some momentum all right we got a lot more to come we're going to talk a little bit of soccer we're going to talk to our players of the game from Friday night the defensive coordinators from both teams we've got our legend of the game coming up you don't want to miss that uh, when we come back, though, we're going to talk a little bit more about York and also about Carter, which is Scott High's opponent, coming up Friday night right after this. Welcome back to the IH Sports Network Roundtable alongside Tim Smith, Rick Keaton. I'm Ben Garrett. We're at El Ray, and we are just getting started. We're here until 8 tonight. We encourage you to come out and be a part of the show if you would like to do so. Lorenzo and his crew back in the kitchen cooking. I don't think Lorenzo's back in the kitchen cooking, Probably but he's not. got folks back in the kitchen right. cooking. So they'll serve you up something good. Stop on by if you'd like to. Guys, let's talk about some scores before we get deeper into this thing. And we, we talked about Oneida defeating Oliver Springs 13 to 10. We talked about Austin East defeating Scott High 24 to 6. Now let's look at how the rest of the region did and specifically how these opponents coming up Friday night did. And so we'll start off in, in class 2A with Rockwood losing to Kingston 24 to 15. York, we've talked a lot about York already. They defeated Livingston, and in my opinion, this was another big win for them, 43-23. to Livingston's a big school, and York put it to them on Friday night. Monterey fell to Stone Memorial, 18-7, to and then this may have been the biggest surprise Friday night, and what a huge win for the Oakdale Eagles, 48, I'm sorry, 28-6 to over Wartburg, and they're now 4-0. and So At Wartburg. At Wartburg. At Wartburg. Yeah. So, so talk about those games, but specifically – did York's 43-23 to 23 win over Livingston tell us? I mean, we already know that's a good York football team. Yeah, they're rolling. That's what that tells us. That, they were supposed to win that game, in my opinion. I mean, Livingston, they are the bigger school, but they're not playing as good a football yeah. right now. Yeah. But that doesn't mean anything. That you can, York could have been looking forward to uh, this game this week. It could have been a trap game with Livingston come in, mm -hmm. and they didn't leave any room for doubt in what they did to the Wildcats on Friday night. So this is a rolling York team that is coming in. Uh, that's why I was talking about the first quarter and how things uh, you know, shape up in this one Friday night. We're going to know a lot early because York, they're feeling very confident, and they should be. Uh, Coach Derwin Wright is back and, and has uh, re-enthused this team, and, and they have a plan. And, I mean, they just look so confident. I watched the, the tape uh, with them in Monterey. Monterey's a very good football team, you know, they have a very strong running game, and they have a, a senior quarterback who's very decisive. They have a senior receiver who is uh, a handful, no matter who you are. And so they are so capable. And York uh, left no doubt in that game. They were at home, granted, uh, but Monterey was very confident coming in, and they were uh, very, very much uh, ready to go when that game ended after they got done with York Dragons. So something's rolling good and something's rolling strong there for the Dragons. They're going to be rolling in Friday night. And the Indians are going to have to figure out uh, what they can do. Like I say, I'm, I'm interested to hear from uh, Coach Martin on what his plan is going to be about uh, standing in front of this, this York train that's coming in and, and trying to. Now, that said, what an opportunity. If you could get this game against the team that is uh, looks like they're playing the best. I mean, Rockwood, of course, you know, they lost to Kingston. That's a county rivalry. Kingston's a very good team. And so John Webb's going to have Rockwood right there. Uh, anybody that believes they're not going to be Rockwood is crazy. So uh, they're going to be a part of it. But uh, if you win this Friday night, you're a part of it too. And Friday night, it's hard to say that Friday night is for a region championship because, you know, Rockwood. Rockwood, uh, Monterey. It is certainly 
a big step towards getting at least a home playoff game Friday night. Monterey, when they came to Onada last year, very confident, just like they were when they went to York. There's a lot of similarities between this game and last year's Monterey yeah. game. And, and Monterey, you know, until they prove different, looks like uh, if, you, if you can catch them and get on them, you, you're going to – you know, it's not guaranteed, but uh, they – just judging from the game Friday night, you know, they, they had won big the first two games. They were very confident, and then things didn't go well at York, and things didn't go well for them again against a good team Friday night. But uh, uh, but you you can't take anybody for granted, certainly, right. uh, because, again, you're 2-2. Two and two. I'm saying from on a you, Oneida, can't take anybody for granted. You're 2-2, two and two. Uh, and while you have been in the lead late in the games and you've secured two of them and – uh, these things are still issues. And, and I haven't even mentioned the injuries, right? I try not to mention that because uh, at some point you got to deal with it, and, and all teams deal with it. And so hopefully we do get healthier as we go along. I think we're going to need that, um, and hopefully we get that Friday. We'll see. All right, Friday night, Oneida, York, 8 o'clock. That is a home game at Dr. Emmy Thompson Field, Jim Bay Stadium. It's a huge game, so you want to make plans to be there if you can. Let's talk about Scott High's region opponents on Friday night. Anderson County looked like that they were done for down against Ray County <laughs> late. They rallied, they get the win, they stay undefeated. 41-38 to was the final there. South Dole, Scott High had just seen them the previous week. They take it on the chin against Bearden, 56-21. to Fulton took it on the chin against Knox West, 47-12. to Two very good football teams, Bearden and Knox West. Yes. It was Gibbs, and we know Gibbs, and they're, they're very much looking like if anybody in this region can give Anderson County a run for that top spot, maybe it's Gibbs. And they defeat Knox Central, 37-34. to And then Carter, the team that we're going to see on Friday night, they defeat Walker Valley 14-3. to Carter's first win of the season against Walker Valley. But when you look at their schedule, they've played a very tough schedule so far. What jumps out at you about those scores? First, I'll start with Anderson County. <clears throat> I believe I, refer, I have referred to them as the beast. Uh, they are a quick strike scoring team. If they need to be, uh, sometimes they have to slow themselves down uh, just to, you know, keep everybody balanced and everything. Coach Gillum, uh, I've known him for several years. Uh, he knows what he wants to do. Uh, believe it or not, he's a run first coach and he is a throw coach second. But it will not take him very long to change that, especially when they're behind. They're a good passing team. So Anderson County, yeah, I still think they are gearing up, looking ahead, and they shouldn't. Well, maybe nobody in our region that they should look up, that they have a fear of. But I still think they're looking ahead to the playoffs in Greenville, and they think they have built the team. With Martinez back at full speed this year, uh, they feel they've got the team to get by Greenville and to make it all the way to well, Chattanooga this year. And I would absolutely agree with that. All right, let's look at some other scores against uh, future and former opponents as we get ready to go to break. Uh, let's see, uh, real quickly, Coalfield defeated Sunbright 46 to nothing. It was Gatlinburg. Scott, I will see them in a few weeks. They defeat Loudon 35 to 28. Hampton defeated Clowland 38 to 6. And I know that's not a scheduled opponent, but just looking at it in the future, you never know. Also, Knox Webb defeated Greenback 48 to 7. It's tough to take anything away from that. Knox Webb is a very good football team. Northview Academy. Now, Oneida is going to see Northview in a couple of weeks, and Northview struggled last year. They put up 70 against Claiborne County, defeated them 70 to 35. It's just new, remarkable. New coach from teammates. one of the big schools in Knoxville, maybe from Oak Ridge. Uh, comes in there and he's revitalized the program. And look, folks, in that Sevier County area, they've got the pickings and the choosings. Uh, Sevier County's looking much better this year. They're sort of rebounding there. And then you've got Northview, Pigeon Forge, and Gatlinburg Pittman. They have players to choose from there. It's which school they choose to go to and help make a team better year to year. And speaking of Sevier County schools, the same week that Oneida faces Northview, Scott High will face Pigeon Forge. Both of those games will be at home. Pigeon Forge lost to Sphere County 19 to nothing on Friday. So let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to switch gears and we're going to jump to soccer as we talk to Scott High coach Eric Henry and a couple of his seniors right after this. Welcome back to the IH Sports Network Roundtable. We're live at El Ray. Invite you to come out and join us tonight. We're going to switch gears real quick and talk about some soccer before we jump back into football. We've got Scott High Coach Eric Henry here. We've got the Tucker Twins, seniors Chloe and Katie here with us as well. And uh, by the way, I, I want to mention this real quickly because somebody 
not that anybody compares how much you cover one school versus the other. Nobody does that. But they're going to say Scott High Soccer two weeks in a row. Oneida's playing a game tonight. Uh, they're playing Corbin as we speak. Corbin up one to nothing in that game. Well, so, Oneida Middle School football has been here every week. Is Jason like ball stocking this or what? Because he's here all the time. The more entertaining you are, the more we invite you back. Oh, so, I see. There that you is. Go. And the prettier you are. As and well. Jason thinks that if somebody doesn't show up, he can fill in. No, there you go. He does know a lot of stuff. Just ask him. So, Coach Eric Henry, it's been two weeks since you were here, and your team has only played once during that time, so not a lot of soccer that's been played to talk about. It'll be two weeks tomorrow since you've been on the field, and, of course, tomorrow you're going to be in Anderson County to start district play, big, big game on the road. Is this the first time you've ever had a two-week break in the middle of the season, and how do you keep your team focused? Uh, that happens in the spring with the boys pretty regular with uh, spring break. Uh, it's difficult to schedule, and it seems that not everybody's spring breaks are on the same time because, you know, sometimes the Knox County schools are at different weeks and hours. But I actually scheduled a, a boys game this spring to, to keep that from happening. But, yeah, this is the first time we've had a large lull with the girls um, that I can remember, and I've been there forever. So, But we did try to keep everything fresh and new last week. Um, we started practice Thursday before last, um, had draft day, and, and we played games, trying to scoreboard on, and we kept score. We did some competitions, different things like that, trying to keep everybody's focus where it should be. So we had a lot of good uh, scrimmages last week, and it was a lot of fun. And as you get ready to go into Anderson County tomorrow, how do you feel about your team with the preparation that you've had? Because this is your biggest game of the season so far. And if you want to take that step that you talked about in the preseason, which is winning another district championship, obviously it starts tomorrow against Anderson County. Yeah, you got to show up uh, first district match. You know, unfortunately, we've had a, a little bit of time off from being in games, but it also helped uh, with the exception of Caitlin, who got hurt last week, <laughs> the last five minutes of practice on Thursday. But I did have some people that were beaten, banged up, and I think it helped them get some rest in and, and, and heal up. So um, with the exception of Caitlin, I think we're all 100% for uh, tomorrow night. All right, I'm going to switch over here to you guys. First of all, let me ask you, is – this is the first set of twins that you've ever coached? Oh, heavens. I've had so many siblings over the years. I think twins, probably. I don't think I'm offending Did anything. you have Eric and Isaac? Did they play soccer? Yeah, I had the Blakely boys. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. Okay. All right. So you guys, you're in the middle of your senior season. These are my now. favorite twins, though. And I mean, no doubt. Down. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was just oh, Eric yeah. and Isaac Blakely. I mean, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, if we're counting boys, you've actually you've got another set of twins, too, in uh, – Rachel and Toby, my yeah. kids. Yeah, exactly. But they're not on the field at the same time. And they don't count. I was just throwing that out there. Anyway, <laughs> you guys, you're in the middle of your senior season now. Talk about, uh, whichever one of you guys want to start this thing off, but talk about what you were feeling coming into this season, knowing that this is it for you, and how you're kind of relishing the feeling as you go through this season. Um, I was excited. Yeah, um, I've been playing since, goodness, I was four. Uh, my mom coached me, then Eric Kinner coached me. Um, I think it's going to come to an end, I mean, obviously, but uh, I was excited to get started. I mean, me and Katie have been playing all of our lives together. Um, bittersweet, for sure. So, Katie, did you start when you were four as well? Um, I did. Um, we were always been on the same team, always right there beside each other. It's always been fun, you know, having your sister, um, starting out early with her and then building along the years. Um, going into senior year, I was nervous because I don't want it to end, but I was ready for it to get started. Has it been a competition between you guys no, at any point? I don't think no. so, no. Okay. So, and Katie, you play midfield. Chloe, you play everywhere, really. You've moved back yeah. and forth. Even during this senior season, you've moved yeah. from offense to defense. Talk about that. and I Because mean, you adjust to your role yeah. wherever you're at pretty well. Um, it's challenging, very challenging. Um, and I, I guess it does come with experience because I've been playing for so long. Um, we joked the other day about how I've played every position on the field except for keeper, and then the next practice I was in the goal. But, um, it I mean, it takes dedication for sure, and that's with everybody on the field. Um, moving from defense to center mid to wing to forward, um, it I mean, I wouldn't say that it's hard. It is hard, but um, I think with a good mindset, I mean, encouragement uh, really helps there. So what is your favorite? Now, I know what you're going to say. Your favorite position is whatever helps your team. But don't just don't be diplomatic for a minute. What's your favorite, offense or defense? Offense. Okay. Yeah. So would you rather have her at offense or would you rather have her at defense? If I had two or three Chloe's, we'd be all right. And I don't say that to besmirch anybody else, but she is 
so versatile that I can put her just about anywhere and I don't have to worry about that spot. And, you know, we had injuries um, going into last season and we were thin in some places and I put her on defense because we didn't have anybody else because we had graduated so many seniors uh, that played defense the year prior. And she did great. And so I'm like, well, and, you know, I always tease them sometimes. I'm like, I've been putting you in the wrong place for all these years and finally figured out where you go. But, uh, yeah, Chloe's uh, – uh, she works hard. I, she never complains to me. I'm sure she does to the girls when I'm not around about me moving around and everything. But I plugged Katie in at center mid at the end of her sophomore year. We had a couple injuries, and she played extremely well over at um, Livingston, I guess it was, in the uh, region game. And I've – been trying to groom her because she sees the field really well and she knows you know where people are supposed to be they're both very intelligent um, field players and that, that helps when you have those kind of players on the field so I, I leave Katie where she's at for the only reason it's basically selfish for me because I need her there to see the field and get the ball to Leah Valley Rachel Chloe whoever's up front and then we go from there and Katie I talked to Eric Henry after every game talked to Phil Newport after every game but your coach the one thing that he always says, and he has always said since, I guess, probably since that Livingston game as a sophomore, Katie sees the field well. I mean, he has said that over and over. Talk about your role as a midfielder and how you kind of set up the, the guys in front of you, the girls in front of you. Um, my mom always makes jokes. She's like, you overshare. You give the ball away when you shouldn't. But to me, if I can give it to a teammate and they can do something with it, I feel like it's more productive than just not – moving the ball well and I always try to find my teammates sometimes I don't Henry makes jokes about getting the ball off my foot I'm like, I'm doing those my are best. not jokes those are serious <laughs> they, they, they definitely are um, I do try my best to get it forward so that I, know, I have very much confidence in the girls up front that they can score and I know that they will if I give it to them at the right time in the right place so you guys have got a big game coming up tomorrow night at Anderson County. We talked about that. 6.30 start time, is that correct, tomorrow night? I think so, yeah. They're on so the turf, so they got to wait for football to get off. So. Okay. And so, and then you're going to be playing Kingston and Clinton, too, uh, with somebody is, is mixed in there, and I, I don't even remember who. Fulton. So there you go. Big big couple of weeks coming up for you guys, but it starts tomorrow against Anderson County. If you're going to get a regular season district championship, soccer is like basketball. You've always got another shot in the postseason. But if you want a regular season district championship, you have to beat Anderson County tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Do you guys feel like that you are prepared, your team is prepared? How do you feel going into that game? We are prepared. Uh, mentality over everything. Um, our team works good together, but um, at the beginning of the season, we struggled. We've grown since then. Um, we have new people on the field, kind of moving around. Um, Rachel uh, moves a lot. Um, I have a lot of confidence in her, our um, offense. Great. We've really improved their um, defense. We worked a little bit with Zoe Terry at CAK. She done excellent. Um, I mean, Zoe can go anywhere on the field. I mean, offense, defense, and the goal. She's she's a, she's a great athlete all the way around. Um, as a team, I do think we can win. I really do. So, Katie, I'm going to come back to you. But let's talk about that since she brought it up. Zoe Terry, you moved her to defense for, for the CAK game, and I would have probably, as, as a sideline coach, I would have probably said, what in the heck is he thinking because she's one of the most you athletic said it out people loud. on the people front. People told me what you said, man. I know you said it out loud. <laughs> I really didn't. But she played spectacular in that game she did. in the back. So is that going to be a permanent role for her now? Uh, well, Zoe's a lot like Zoe. She can play just about anywhere, including keeper. Um, she's one of the best athletes uh, well, she's probably the best athlete at Scott High. She's super fast. She Boys or girls, both. By the way. Yeah, and uh, she had been off with with a little bit of an injury. She'd been sick and everything, and so touches weren't there. And I had subbed people in. And I said the only thing I want you to do is not dribble it straight out of bounds. And the three people on the, I put on the wing dribbled it straight out of bounds. So I gave her a second chance uh, at uh, on defense because I pulled Caitlin out. Talking about Caitlin over there, um, she fell on a play, and so. You know, me knee-jerk reaction. I pull her out, even though she's played defense for the last two years, and put Zoe in. Zoe's really fast. She's got pretty heavy legs, so she can get rid of the ball. And she's just like Katie. She's very intelligent. She can see the field, and she knows she can feel the pressure when it's, you know, when it's coming from the backside when she's not even looking. So she can get rid of the ball. And uh, she did a really good job over there. All right, Katie, I'm going to come back to you. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I had to ask the Zoe question real quick. You guys, both of you guys, you played on a team that won – a district championship in the regular season as a freshman and then again as a sophomore. So you guys know what it takes. So as you go into the stretch coming up, 
what, what's your message to the, to the people behind you, the juniors, the sophomores, the freshmen that don't have that experience and don't know what it takes to win a district championship against these teams like Anderson County and Kingston? Um, I definitely tell them that the intensity is always high, so keep yours high. You don't want to be caught on the back end of something. Um, always go in with confidence, even if you don't feel like you have any. Um, your teammates have confidence in you. Um, I have to tell myself that a lot too, so just thought I'd give that message to everybody else. Um, definitely trust each other, talk, communicate, and everything will fall through. Okay, now you mentioned two of your coaches since you started playing soccer when you guys were four. Your mom coached you, Mandy, when you were in, in ASO. You mentioned Eric Henry coaching in high school. You've had other coaches as well. Mm -hmm. Probably you've had other ASO coaches, but certainly you had other middle school coaches. But Mandy Tucker, Eric Henry, which one's your favorite coach? Wait a minute, I can answer that question. <laughs> oh, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. We had the coolest name. What was her name, guys? Henry's Honey Badgers. That's right. He asked us to wear our shirts. I'm like, well, that was about seven years ago. <laughs> they they didn't want to wear their shirts. <laughs> You guys, no, these guys, you didn't answer the question. My mom. I'll okay. always choose my mom. <laughs> Go be my mom. You can, okay. So it's unanimous. That's the correct answer. Mandy's a good coach. I'd probably pick Mandy too. So, <laughs> All right. Got, by the way, were you in the student section Friday night? I was cheering. I was in the student section. You were cheering. Of course you were. You were in the student section. <laughs> yes. Student section, and I'll tell you this because you're an athletics director. Um, maybe the best student section I've seen this year anywhere. That was great. And South Doyle had a good student section, but – Scott High students rocked it on Friday night. Oh, yeah, they, they've really been bringing it. To, we got some teachers on board that are helping the kids get things organized. And we've got a bunch of exuberant guys that are not uh, uh, on the football field, and probably a lot of basketball players out there, and then just a lot of other kids who just enjoy everything. They had, uh, I think, Hawaiian pizza because it was Luau uh, Friday and everything. Or Hawaiian From Baby Friday. Jay's Pizza. Yes, Baby Jay's Pizza. And uh, they had a bunch of cornhole and stuff over there, and they were playing games. And uh, – the only thing I didn't like was all the powder they threw up when they were yeah. doing it. Yeah. I was choking over there. So, we we'll don't do that anymore because it was thick. Yeah. Rick, was that I you or Harris that said, where's this fog coming it was, from? It was, it was H that said that. And, <laughs> no, I might have said that. I'm the one who said that because I was looking around. Man, it's just getting real hazy out there. Well, and I did, thought They did do it off the bleachers because, you know, Hembree's pressure washing first down yeah. there. They, they've been cleaning the bleachers the last couple of weekends for us. And I said, do not get anything on the fresh, clean bleachers. So they did it right next to the fence, which was pretty close to where I was, and it was just, you know, everywhere. So what's the theme? Next week is homecoming. What's the theme? Uh, I think red and gray. Okay. So but unless Rick Keaton's got anything, before I let you guys go, um, Eric Henry is on our picking panel. We always have a senior on our picking panel, and that's Caitlin Butts, and she's, she's sitting back here, so she's not under pressure. But I'm going to ask you guys, fr this Friday night, Scott High plays at Carter. Who are you picking to win? I don't want to hurt feelings, but probably Carter. No. I don't want to knock the confidence of Scott, but probably Carter. Okay. Now, you don't have to worry about hurting. Actually, you do have to worry about hurting feelings with the Oneida game. Mm. Oneida plays York. Big region game for them. Who you got? York. I'm going to go with York, too. All right. So, it's unanimous both ways. Rick, you got anything? Well, I want to ask Coach a couple things. Um, I think you hit on it briefly, Coach. Injury status and depth that you have leading into this big stretch of games. Um, I think everybody, with the exception of Caitlin, is pretty healthy. You know, the, the last week was good for Rachel. She had hurt herself at the CAK game. And uh, shockingly, I don't know where she gets it. She didn't listen to anything I said about taking care of herself. It's probably been. But Caitlin did. She, she, uh, I texted her a couple times over the weekend, checked on her. She was doing the ice elevation ibuprofen, and uh, it's really hideous. We should get her on camera to show it because it's all <laughs> kinds of different purples and everything. But uh, we'll, we'll see. How, I'll tape her up really good, and we'll see how she does. But, uh, you know, I've got four or five anxious people on the bench, and I've got some uh, of the younger players, first-year players, that uh, um, haven't seen as much time as they probably could. And this may be the, the upcoming stretch that they get on the field more. Our brum has been doing a really good job on the wing. Um, Kimmy Frog's been in there the whole time. Brittany Morrow's still injured. She, she, she's out. Uh, um, Abby Henson's probably going to get some more time because if Caitlin can't go, then I'm going to have to move people around and uh, probably have Abby Reynolds go center defensive mid or something like that. And then, uh, you know, we'll make adjustments from there. But, you know, we, we've got to get the ball in the net above everything else. It doesn't matter about everything else. If you can't score, you can't win. So. Indeed. Indeed. Thanks, Coach. All right.
Katie, Chloe Tucker, even though you had to share your time with Eric Henry, I apologize about that. But thank you guys for stopping by. Good luck tomorrow against Anderson County. Thank you. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll slide Jason Terry in here and switch gears and talk about middle school football. Welcome back to the IHSN Roundtable. We're live at El Rey. I'm Ben Garrett. He's Rick Keaton. He's Tim Smith. He is Jason Terry, Oneida Middle School football coach. We're going to, Tim, I'll turn this over to you in just a second. Before I do that, we've been talking soccer. I'll give you a score update because Oneida High School is playing Corbin as we speak right over here at the Walmart field, as Eric Henry calls it. The Jane Terry Hoffman Field, as everybody else calls it. What do you call it? Jane, Jane Terry, Terry Hoffman yeah. Field. It's kind of demeaning to call it the Walmart Field. Anyway. <laughs> I agree. That, uh, Eric Henry. They're not even a sponsor, Ben. I don't know why you keep uh, <laughs> plugging them. Well, he's, I he's mean, unless hope, you're getting something he's on your own. He's hoping for that. that. I mean, it's uh, we'll, something none of us are going to We're wooing eat. them. We'll bring them on board. Corbin is up 2 to nothing in that game, by the way, just before halftime. Let's talk about cross country real quickly as well. There was a cross country meet at McCreary Central on Thursday. Scott High and Oneida were both there, and they usually are both there. Wherever one team goes, the other one is, is usually there. There were a pair of top ten finishes in that one. Keely Strunk, is it, did I pronounce her name right, Keely? I think so. Oneida freshman, she finished fourth on the girls' side. Cameron Parker, we know him. He's our cameraman, for, at least for home games. He finished ninth on the boys' side. Uh, Abby Henson from Scott High, she finished just outside the top ten as well. Um, Riley Lance from Scott High had a 14th place finish. Caitlin Chitwood from Oneida had a 15th place finish. Haley Flores finished 16th. And then on the boys' side, Hayden Blevins from Scott High was 17th. Andy Blevins 24th. Dylan King was 27th. And then there were several other runners from Scott and Oneida who took part in that as well. Aiden Roberts, Cayman Sexton, Austin Jeffers, Apollo Bruce, and Jeremiah Schaefer. So that was Cross Country on Thursday night. Cross Country will be back at it again this Thursday night. Someone else is going to be at it Thursday night is Jason Terry and his middle school Indians. Coach, that was a big win last week. Not yeah, that you won, but that you won by as much as you did. That surprised me. It surprised me a little bit, too. Um, we got a nice squad. I told you that repeatedly. But uh, we come out and we we took care of business early. We uh, Mistakes were minimal. Um we got after them, and, uh, yeah, to say that the score was a surprise to me would be an understatement. And it was Wartburg, right? Because we a, haven't said that. It was a Wartburg team, uh, a really good team. At their place. At their place. Which, so. by the way, guys, that was a real busy night for Oneida Indian sports. You had the middle school at Wartburg. Yep. Uh, you had the uh, girls' soccer team, weren't they – playing someplace, they then the you had the high school football. I mean, so that was a busy night for – Very and, busy. We actually uh, moved the game up an hour. They were gracious enough to help us out there, so we were able to get back to about halftime. So so you talked about the, the two teams that were maybe projected as the leaders in in your district, in Rockwood and Wartburg, and now you've been able to overcome both of those, and that keeps you from having to, to face them. I mean, that they'll have to – deal with each other right that's correct uh providing we take care of what we should do this thursday against oliver springs uh, we get the first round by and be opposite of both of those guys so, so what's oliver springs record coming in i'll be honest i don't know i really don't look at records i look at the film i look at the, you know the x's and o's and who does what and i really don't even look at the record that means nothing to us uh, so what are the what problems will they present that you're going to have to neutralize them they've got a really good running back from last year uh, don't know the kid's name number 44 but he's big strong back he runs it hard uh, they're well coached and they'll they'll execute well so we've got to come in take care of business and move on to the next one i'm gonna have to ask you to do your homework next time before you come you gotta know his name you gotta <laughs> know, okay their record yeah no, that's unfair i'm hitting you with these questions yeah. right out of the gate so all right so you got oliver springs that's the last district game or is there more uh last yes yeah. last district game. but you have more games who else who else you got on the schedule following week we play cherokee then cumberland gap and then we're at birchfield to close out the regular season and now cherokee pretty big game it'll be a very big game yeah. uh so we're gonna need a big crowd there get all you people out there to support uh they're pretty good yeah. we'll have our hands full are, now, are they, are they a team you might have to see down the road, or are they No, they're division? AAA. It's just okay. we got together. Coach Seaver, he's a great guy. Um, we try to work it out every time. Schedule doesn't always allow, but it did this time. So, um, we got them back on the schedule, and we'll see what happens. And we've got uh, – I think we're advertising for a broadcast crew for that one. 
<laughs> That's all, I know he's here. He said he, he came. He said he's wanting the broadcast crew. And I know Greg, he's, he had a night off last week, and we can't allow no, that to continue. That can't happen. No. So yeah. uh, um, what about um, for the middle school, just some, some uh, coaches. Talk, tell us about some coaches, what they're doing uh, their roles are on your staff this year. That's what I mean by coaches. Your my coaches. coaches. Yes, okay. exactly. I, I didn't want to ask you a like, hard one anymore. I learned I like, my hope lesson. I hope they ain't doing a whole yeah. lot. But, uh, you know, I got a great staff. I always have. Um, this year I was able to to uh, talk Coach Birchfield uh, into coming back. You know, he's got 42, 43 years experience doing this. The kids love him to death. He's uh, – as a lot of his former players will tell you, you know, he – he gets he gets after you hard, but he loves you even harder. So uh, he was a big get to get back. Coach Lay, he's been with me all ever since the beginning. Does a wonderful job. You need anything done, he's got he's got it covered. Does a great job with the linebackers. So um, Coach Phil, he's been with us the entire way too. Again, the old night of guys who put their heart and soul into it, do an outstanding job. And then this year, we got a. a Coach Shoemaker, he came on board here late. So, uh, Phil and Corey and Birch and Shoemaker, who we got, and Shu does a great job with the wide receivers, uh, running them in and out. We're we're I'm very blessed to have the guys that I have. It makes my job a whole lot easier knowing that I don't have to worry about certain aspects of certain things. Is there a side of the ball or a particular player group that has surprised you that you were worried about coming into the year and they just really surprised you? Either way. Offense, defense, or player group? I wouldn't say a particular group as much as I would say as a team. I really question our physicality, and I think I mentioned that last time. I just I wasn't sure that we had what it takes to be physical, play in, play out, night in, night out, and they really surprised me. They they will get after you. So and that's a little bit what happened last week against Waltberg. You know, we hit them in the mouth early, and uh, we kept going. So. Not necessarily a group, but uh, they've all worked hard. Offensive line is probably a lot better than I anticipated. We had a lot of kids work hard all off season, uh, bigger, stronger, and they they just get it. They come to work every day, and you, you like coaching kids like that. Middle school games, because of the limits of time, can be really <laughs> scary in a way. I mean, if you have a bad start, mm -hmm. a couple of bad plays, and uh, you know things can turn really quick. So you've avoided that all this year, I guess. We have. Uh, the hardest part, and knock on wood, I'm, uh, we've been trying to get as many kids in to get as much experience as we can. And like you said, sometimes with a running clock, that becomes hard to do. And, uh, you know, those kids come to practice every day. They work hard every day just like the starters do. So we want to get them as many minutes, as many reps as possible. You guys got any questions for this man? I feel like I've dominated his well, time. I've actually seen his team play once in person this year. Very impressed by your squad. I, I really am. Uh, matter of fact, I may have told somebody, you remind me a whole lot of many high school JV teams in the size that you have and uh, the number of eighth graders that you have and the skills of some of the other people, your running backs, your receivers and everything. And, yeah, your quarterback too. <laughs> I need I need to throw that out there. So uh, I, I might get whipped yeah. when I leave here. But believe it or not, Rick, I don't know if you've seen us last year. We're a lot smaller this year than we were last year. Well, so. I, that's what I was told when I commented on this. So, well, yeah, you should have saw them last year. So, but, uh, Numbers but wise, how many do you have? Total players, total we have players. 49 players, uh, 28th graders. So That's uh, not fair. <laughs> so, so do you put a penny on some of them so they can't go this game just to even things up a little no, bit? No, I just we, – we, we hit them halls hard. I mean, I'm out there every day, and if I see – well, all of them. We have meetings all year long. I'm – I mean, we need them. They need to be doing something. So we're out there recruiting every day in the hallway. So, but yeah, 49 players. It's like I said, it's tough sometimes, but it's a well, it's a challenge that we welcome. All right, Coach Jason Terry talking about his middle school lineage. We're just halfway through. Uh, if you want to come out to Elray and join us, we certainly welcome you to do so. We're going to switch back to high school football when we come back from a break. But guys, before we do that, real quickly, let's get to this week's trivia question. Jason Terry, you are ineligible. Okay. You're not allowed to even take a guess this week. This week's trivia question. So last week was a Scott High question. This week is no not a question. We've talked a lot, Tim, about Oneida's is going to play York on Friday night. And when York comes over here, they're going to bring a coach with them who is a former Oneida coach. Now we're not talking about just football. It can be any sport, but there is a coach on the York staff who is a former coach on the Oneida staff 
And that's the trivia question. Who is coaching at York that is a former Oneida coach? Jason, do you, without saying it, do you know the answer? I do. Okay. It, if you listen to Tim's broadcast at all, you know this. This should be an easy one. So Most people won't answer, know it then. <laughs> <laughs> if you know the answer, yeah. you can text 423-539-4616. 539-4616. Or so with that, we'll go to a break. When we come back, we'll talk to Friday night's First National Bank Players of the Game. Welcome back to the IH Sports Network Roundtable. We are live from El Rey in Oneida alongside Tim Smith, Rick Keaton. I'm Ben Garrett. We've got our first National Bank players of the game with us from Friday night from Oneida. We have Elijah Phillips from Scott High. We've got Alton Whaley. And real quickly, we'll, we'll get obviously to both of you guys, but I'm going to start over on this side, on the Scott High side. And, and Alton, you played, you, you, you've been having a, a big junior season. Uh, but Friday night, Scott struggled early. You guys started to move to football in the second quarter, and you were the spark that kind of got it going. And then, of course, you wound up scoring a touchdown late in the game. But talk about your effort on Friday, and then I'll just turn it over to Rick. Uh, I think it was more of a straight downhill type thing. You just got to 100%, I guess. You know, the, the thing here, Ben, that we've got tonight, we've got linebackers and ball carriers from our players of the game, so it's always good to see that. Um, I was just asking Alton, you know, looking at his frame last year, you remind me a lot of last year, Jaden Myers, but this year the frame is full, filled out. You've put a lot of weight on. You've had a little bit of a knee problem coming in, but Friday night you looked real strong. And I, when I say strong, I meant you look strong and determined to pick up yardage against Austin East. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Well, I just hate those one-word answers, don't you guys? Uh, but you had several runs. Help you me had, out. Yeah, help me out. You had the runs. Uh, you fought for that extra yardage. And at the time that you were doing that, I thought, boy, we really needed that. We needed the pickup because a lot of that was in the second half. And, we, and I felt the team needed the pickup to try to do better. Uh, yes, sir. It was mostly on a third down, second, third down when we really needed it. You're not part of that ogre package but uh but i'm telling you the way that you ran last week i think coach harris should consider that uh i don't know i think bill does it pretty good he has the weight on him and everything he he can get down here if he needs to now for people who might not know who is bill uh landon crabtree okay where did the nickname <laughs> bill come from uh i don't really know i think it really originated from one of his buddies caught him in the locker room and it just kind of stuck around i guess Sort of like Bull Creek. Bull Creek doesn't know where it came, where the nickname came from. Uh, I mean, he lives there. Yes, but, sir. I mean, so it stuck there like that. Um, against Austin East, first half, second half, defensively. That's what I'm getting at. First half, you know, we weren't as strong. We weren't aggressive. Uh, we kept grasping and couldn't make tackles mm -hmm. on people. We, what was said at halftime, because I felt the team came out and did so much better defensively in the second half. Okay. Uh, Coach Golden really got on to us about needing to hit him low, not trying to make the big play, like be an all-star on it. Just hit him in the knees, hit him lower, all rally to the ball. All rally. I think that was a big thing that was a great improvement, rallying to the ball better. Uh, because that has been, as I look at all the games, that has been a problem, especially with some of the stronger-looking players, mm -hmm. being able to get them on the ground. And the one-hand shirt tackles is not doing it. No, not with someone of that size. You can't can't grab him by the shirt there. You got to hit him low or wrap him. Or I know you had a chance in money's practice to look at a little bit of film. The upcoming opponent is Carter. Mm -hmm. What do you think about this week's game? Uh, they're very well, they're a good team. They're well coached. We got to come out and give them everything we got. How about going back on the road and have a road trip over to? East Knoxville this week? Uh, I don't really know if the team really likes traveling a lot, but just something you got to do, I guess. Line up and go. A reminder also, that's a 7 o'clock start time at uh, Carter this week. Let me ask you this, Audney. You went down in the game against Coalfield to open the season, mm -hmm. and in the second half of that game, after seeing you go down and then you're you're on the sideline, you're out of uniform, you got the ice pack wrapped around your knee, I would not have bet that you would have been back at any any time soon how is the knee uh it's better i gotta keep that brace on at all times 
But if I make a cut on it every here and there, it'll get a little tender. But I'm mainly downhill now. so Yeah, you don't cut much. You just kind of run over people. Yeah. All right, no. Hang tight. We'll come back to you if, if Tim Smith's got anything. Our other player of the game, and you're right, Rick. Last week, both players of the of the game were quarterbacks, and I didn't think about the fact. Obviously, both of you guys carry the football, <laughs> but you both also play that linebacker position. And Elijah, you've been Mr. Consistency this year for Oneida, and another big game on Friday night against against Wartburg. Thank you, appreciate it. All right, Elijah. <laughs> um, real quick, wh offense or defense? Which do you like? Do you like one better than the other, or is defensive guy for sure? Does that just cause defensive coordinators sitting out here? You just no, I just always like working defense. that angle. Is Mark's that not even paying here? attention to him, so it doesn't matter. Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, uh, but yeah, defense for sure. All right, now <clears throat> you have uh, several checks in the co you don't have many zeros in the columns. I mean, you've got tackles, you've got touchdowns, you've got receiving touchdowns, you've got interceptions. Do you have a fumble recovery? I thought so. Yeah, so you got a fumble recovery. So when are they going to let you return kicks? I really don't. I couldn't tell you. I mean, we've got to talk to somebody about this because there's a zero in that return column for Elijah. And maybe Coach we'll Martin change it, can. Don't we? Maybe he, he, he's not notching that down. Now, seriously, uh, that you've had uh, it, every game's been close. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we talked about it in the in the beginning. At, with five minutes to go, Onada's been ahead in every game, and you got two of them, and you didn't get two of them. So, uh, you know, what's going to have to happen this week? Uh, for you to for you to beat York, do you feel like this is the best team you all have played? Yeah, for sure. And I feel like for us to win, we're gonna have to just limit our mistakes and just finish, just execute everything like we should. Because we're making we're making good plays, and it's just little plays, just small mistakes that kill us every single drive. So I feel like if we just kind of clean up those, it'll help us a lot. One of the things I mentioned, and I'm gonna ask Coach Martin about because. Uh, and, and I hate to tip him off because he's going to plan his answer, but I was watching last year's game, and York likes to take it to the sideline. They want to get to the edge, and we did not let them do it at their place last week, last year. Last week, we struggled with that against Oliver Springs, mm -hmm. and they don't look as strong as York in that particular uh, situation. Do you think we'll be able to, to stop that edge this week? I think so. I think we're going to work on it all week. I feel like that's going to be a main focus of practice for sure. Yeah. I mean, I don't want you to give me secrets, okay? But oh, I yeah, but I, I think they're probably figuring you're going to be planning yeah. for that. So what do you in, – in this game, what do you think it's going to look like? Is this uh, – let's talk about the York defense now. Uh, do they look uh, – when you look at York, is it a balanced team or is one side of the ball better than the other, in your opinion? They're pretty balanced. they got good athletes on both sides of the ball. I mean – Okay, so so what's going to be the struggle this week? What do you think is going to be the harder part, stopping them from scoring or scoring points on? Because that's a tough one. I'm, I would be sitting one. there thinking, yeah, because either way is probably pretty stopping tough. them from scoring because they have a really good offense. Yeah, a lot of athletes. Quarterback's really good. Yeah. So uh, uh, injury-wise, you got any sneak peeks? That are we going to be getting any healthier this week? Anybody back that we know of for sure? Uh, I don't know as of now, but yeah, I, I know I saw where. Uh, TDs had a, had a rough yeah, weekend. Uh, yeah, so uh, and and we want to say uh, uh, to Todd, Derek, Ryan. That's who we're talking about. I uh, hope he's feeling better because I mean, uh, he he's had it rough yeah, since rough, Friday night, rough. and so we're hoping he's feeling better. But um, but we've still had a lot of folks out, and I was just wondering if you could tip us off on if we're going to get any healthier on on Thursday or Friday. But we'll just keep that close to the best, okay? So hope we'll just hope that happens. But um, offensively, what's I'm going to ask you both sides of the ball, okay? Offensively, what's one thing we have to do to beat York? We have to do successfully that we haven't really Just done. our blocking scheme, execute our blocking scheme, make sure we block everybody across the line and just stuff like that, just execute. Run execute blocking, pass blocking, or both? Run blocking. Run blocking. Pass blocking, just a little bit of both, really. Okay. All right, defensively, what's the top thing that's going to – Give you nightmares thinking about Setting the we edge. gotta do this. Is it getting the edge set for sure? So I did a good job, Scout. Yeah, for sure. Oh, that's awesome. Go ahead and let's let's catch another, catch another Alton. Alton, I, I feel I feel pretty confident. I asked a good question, so I'm gonna sit on that just a minute. Well, so. as as we look at Alton <laughs> and Scott High making the road trip, uh, I may be in the minority when I say this, but for some reason, in a lot of years. We may play better on the road. I don't know if that is because the expectation at home is so much greater than it is on the road, but I feel that a lot of times. Yeah, that's uh, – I mean, South Duel, we came out there and 
I feel like we did pretty good against South Duel and then last week and Cofield game we didn't really do that good against them. And that was at home. And last year it was like that too and I think it was my freshman year. We was more we won all of our away games and lost all our home games. Yeah, now that's a stat for you, isn't it? I wanna know you, you talked about Coach Golden, and, and he got under the defense at halftime, but just how irate was Coach Chris Harris at halftime on Friday night against Austin East? Uh, he was more – he kind of sat back and just let Coach Golden get it because he, he got hold of us pretty good, Coach Golden, Coach Wright. So I have never – Coach Harris, when he yells, you'll know it, but that's yeah. not much, not is often. it? He don't yeah. often do it, but whenever he does it, it's, it's pretty scary. Yeah. All right. At the risk of looking like – the dumb one at the table, okay? Tim probably knows the answer to this. I don't. So I want to know your signature. What's this? Oh, I yeah. I mean, we were just in the locker room one day, and we were just like, what's one thing we can do? Just, And I was just – we just stuck the hands up. I just done that, and then everybody started doing it, and it just kind of continued. Now, I mean, I, it's kind of just a random thing that just got brought up, and we were just like, what do you all want to do? And that just got brought up. Now, I saw this yesterday. Did Kansas City do that? Caden's here, too. Is, is this a Kansas City? Is that what they do? I'm pretty sure I saw Kansas City do that yesterday. I so you're know. saying it's not original? No, I'm not saying that at all. Maybe Kansas City stole it from it's, them. It's you it's called know. it's called on and it's made its way I mean, all the way to the NFL. With the I Sports Network huh? is yeah, big time now. You it. know, Pat Mahomes is sitting home on Friday trying to pick up some pointers, right? Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Let me ask you. I like your question. I'm not down on your question. Let me ask you a better question. <laughs> yes, I like you. A so, better question. Um, who is who is the uh, most colorful <coughs> teammate? Uh, who who's the one? Uh, when you say colorful, you mean? I mean, you know, the most interesting that we can talk about here. Landon uh, Lindbergh. You gotta watch out for Landon. Landon Lindbergh. Yeah. For sure. You got? Do you ever have to pull Landon back sometimes? Cool it, Landon. Come back. When you say colorful, you're talking about like. What do you mean? You just gotta explain that to me. Oh, he's just you know. Sometimes people's emotions get the oh, best. Oh, emotions. Yeah. Okay, I thought you were talking about just yeah. a different personality. Well, yeah, but, uh, Landon, you're right. Yeah, <laughs> I get that. I know Landon. You're right. But I got you. Is uh, there somebody you have to pull back from the edge and calm down? Because you seem to me like you keep it under control pretty good. Is there somebody you have to help with that? Probably. I mean, you don't have to out somebody. Don't 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 get yourself in trouble. Your mom? <laughs> was, she, was she upset about not being here tonight? That's what I hear. No. Okay, all right. I'm just so. making sure because I'm – <laughs> I'm saying next time, because you're going to do this again, right? Oh, yeah. I, th I hope so. I mean, look, hope like so. I say, once he gets that punt return or kickoff return for touchdown, I expect parents to be here. What? Right? Okay. So, we're just <laughs> making sure. Now, back to the question. Who was the teammate? Probably John Selby, just because he gets so into it. He's fired up. I mean, he Got just he enjoys Got playing it. the game. And it's, and it's a good thing. Yeah, it's it a good thing. Yeah. You can tell that they care. Their heart's in it. Can I ask both of you all, you've talked about, teammates and coaching is and I, I think I've tried to ask this about the the players of the week both times but is coaching something you could see yourself doing in the future I'll catch Elijah first uh, I mean not as of now but maybe later on in life I might do it but not right now I don't think all right what about you uh probably not I mean maybe come out and assist but yeah I'll bet you Mark Martin would have said probably not too when he was in high school there yeah. he is all right, guys, Elijah and Alton, thank you guys for stopping by and joining thank us. You. Good luck this Friday night. Two big region games. Uh, Scott Hodge got Carter on the road. You guys have got York at home. Good luck to both of you guys. And we'll take another break. When we come back, we're going to slide our defensive coordinators in here as we continue to talk about Oneida Scott High football and this upcoming week's games. Welcome back to the IA Sports Network Roundtable live from El Ray alongside Rick Keaton. And Tim Smith, I'm Ben Garrett, and now we've got our defensive coordinators joining us, and I think this is the first time that we have had anyone join us from the high school coaching staffs. And so Charles Golden from Scott High, Mark Martin from Oneida, thank you guys for, for stopping in. And we'll, we'll just stay with the way we've been going and start on this side and start with Scott High. Uh, Coach Charles Golden, first year as a defensive coordinator on Chris Harris's staff and first year as a high school assistant coach. Talk about how you're kind of adapting to the high school game after a lot of years at the middle school level. Uh, it's been a little bit of a change, but, you know, it, it's been a lot of fun, too. Uh, Coach Harris, he, he lets you coach. Uh, there's never any question about it. He's going to let you try to do your job. Uh, it's fun. Uh, the guy really believes in the kids having some fun and working hard while they're doing it. 
for an 0 3 team, you know, we're really, we've got a bunch of involvement going on right now. We're growing, we're getting better every week. We improve on something each and every week. If we ever put it together, I think it's going to be something really special to see. Coach does give a lot of freedom to his assistant coaches, especially to you, Charles. Uh, Alton just told us a while ago, he said, halftime, because I asked him this question, halftime last week against Austin East, you know, how did it go in the locker room? I came through your end of the locker room, and, yeah, it was uh, the coach taking over that end of the locker room last week. Tell us about that. Oh, well, we weren't tackling, honestly. Mm -hmm. we, we were trying to go high on the quarterback. He was a big dude, uh, probably one of the biggest quarterbacks we'll see all year. Our guys kept trying to go high on him. Our D-line wasn't doing a good job of keeping the offensive linemen from getting down to our backers, so they weren't able to flow and feel real well. So kind of had a little bit of a come-to-Jesus moment there at the half. And uh, we rolled from our normal set. We went with – adjusted to more of a four-man line look to keep some blockers from getting up to our backers. Went with a different coverage. Kind of got a couple guys hind ends at the lock at the half. And uh, may, have been, may or may not have been the reason that the blow-up happened a little bit. So uh, – but we adjusted real well, came out in the second half, and I think they had one uh, touchdown drive after that, and it was a short field. I think it, we made them snap the ball 14 mm -hmm. times to go 27 yards. Had them on fourth and goal. Almost got the stop there, but uh, we had a real clean second half. Uh, middle linebackers, I think Whaley had probably eight, nine tackles. Clayton Carroll was probably close to double digits. Uh, without the blockers getting downfield on them, they really got to flow to the football and have some fun in the second half, and it showed. You mentioned Coach Harris a while ago. Of all the coaches I've seen, he wants an intense practice, but he wants the young men to enjoy that practice. And I think that's a different environment than you and I have ever been around. It's definitely different. I'm having the most fun I've had in my 15 years of coaching though this year. Uh, the guy knows how to get the most out of you while having fun doing so. And I think the kids would all tell you that too. There's never a day that goes by where it's just a dull practice where they're just running their self into the ground. It's everything's fun, everything's fast paced. They're learning, they're working hard. And there's a lot of laughing and smiling going on too. And competition. And that's how they're trying to build themselves up. And uh, the tackling thing, the issue that you mentioned, that has sort of bit us in all three games so far this yes, year. Yes, sir. Uh, it's something we're trying to improve on every single day. Uh, for the past two weeks, we start every practice with tackling drills. Like they could tell you today, we did two different tackling stations today, probably spent about 30 minutes on that, the entire team. It doesn't matter if you're a quarterback, if you're a wide receiver, if you're the kicker, you've got to know how to tackle and we're repping it every day. We're trying to get better in that phase of the game. And I think you're going to see some improvements this week on that. Speaking of this week, the road trip over to Carter. What do you perceived to be the biggest challenges from Carter? We got to limit their yards after the catch. They're a team that likes, the, they throw the ball all over the, all over the place. Uh, but it's a lot of rhythm stuff. They want to get the ball out quickly. Let the receivers run after the catch. They've got, number three might be the fastest guy we play all season long. He's lightning in a bottle. We've got to limit their yards after the catch this week. Do you look forward to it being a region game and having Absolutely. to go on the road? Absolutely. I, I'm, I look forward to every game. We're not going to coach scared. We're going to go in trying to win every single game, whether we're playing a Pee Wee football team or we're playing the Dallas Cowboys. We're going to go in every week trying to improve and win the game. There's not much difference. Hey, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I thought that, but after yesterday's performance, I sort of thought that, but I wasn't going to go there. Uh, Charles, it's, it's a hoot to come out and watch uh, Scott High practice this year. I mean, the players are intrigued. They're – um, into what's going on, and they talk to their coaches, guys. I mean, just like we're sitting here and having this conversation. they I think they feel free they can come up and talk to a coach. I've seen many of them tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, I got a question. Uh, yeah. uh, they're, they're, they're eager to learn to get better. This is a team that's very hungry to get better. We do, Honestly, they push themselves harder than we could ever do it. Uh, they want to get better. They want to improve. If they've got a question about something, we've got kids that are coming up asking us five, six questions a day of how can I improve at this, how can I improve at that. It's a very hungry team that wants to get better and wants to compete for ball games, And it's been a lot of fun coaching these guys. Yeah, it, it certainly has. And we're looking forward to this Friday night especially so.
All right, let's swing over to Tim Smith and, and, and Mark Martin and Coach Mark Martin. Uh, your second year as a defensive coordinator. Yes, sir. And you spent a few years in the box, mm -hmm. uh, but now you're down on the sideline, and, and it's easy to tell that you're enjoying yourself down there. Oh, yeah, I absolutely love it. And first, let me say thank you for having me out tonight. Really enjoying this. It's going to be meeting everybody here tonight. Um, and, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. It's a lot of fun. All right. <clears throat> so, enjoy is an interesting word because I've watched, uh, like I said, I, I went back and watched last year's York. Mm -hmm. I've, I've watched York versus Monterey this year. And so, I think you enjoy the competition. Absolutely. The challenge. Mm -hmm. And this is a challenge. No doubt week. about it. Uh, you, you've uh, had, had mix and match personnel injuries and all these things that uh, maybe what you start was going thought the start of the defense was going to be going in this year. It's never really, you've not had all those pieces put together. Mm -hmm. uh, and you may not. That's just how football is. Uh, and you've had to find a way. What's been the toughest part about about trying to piece this defense together? Because, I mean, uh, as I mentioned at the top, you know, scoring-wise, you haven't given up a lot of points, especially if you take away that excellent Williamsburg team on mm -hmm. their, you know, in their territory. Mm -hmm. uh, you haven't given up a lot of points, but there has been a almost a bend-don't-break. You've, you've given up a lot of yards. Yep. And is – do you see that as just kind of how you're having to live right now to get by, or, or is that going to stay this week, or what do you think? Well, first, the kids have uh, just played their hearts out, you know, and you can see that in the bend but don't break sort of uh, adjective you're using there and how they're, you know, bowing up and getting stops when they have to. Um, fundamentally, you know, we've got some stuff to clean up, absolutely, and it just seems like, you know, we'll have two good plays in a row, have them third long, and then something will happen, and we give a first down, and there we go. We're, you know, back first and ten, having to go again. Um, so getting off the field on third down, I would say, is our biggest challenge. And, you know, you've probably noticed this too. Football's changed a lot. Uh, fourth and three, you know, not a lot of people are bunting it anymore right. on fourth and three. They're taking a shot on that fourth and three, even from their side of the field a lot of times now. So you're not having to defend three downs anymore. You're really having to defend four downs. Uh, so getting off the field on third and fourth downs probably been the biggest challenge this year. And you've been Something in, we're working on. You've been in low scoring games, which mm -hmm. kind of affords the other teams this. Well, my defense is doing well, yep. so uh, you know we'll roll the dice on this. And sometimes that that comes up on on your side as well. You're asked to to step up if it doesn't go well. Mm -hmm. But this York team, um, they they present a myriad of challenges. And watching last year. You know, uh, Elijah mentioned Landon Lindbergh. Last year, it's kind of seemed like Landon's, if you, if you have a breakout game. Coming out party, yeah. Yeah, he kind of had one against York last year with uh, mostly deflections, most, a mm -hmm. lot of times recoveries. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and, and, I mean, he, he's really continued to play at a high level at the corner position. No doubt about it. Uh, last year, like you said, it was a lot of pass breakups. He's turning a lot of his pass breakups into turnovers. This year, I don't know if he's up to four yet or not, but uh, his interception numbers are really high. His pass breakups are uh, really high, but you know he's uh, he's playing really really good for us. There's no doubt about it. So you uh, progressed through the season last year, and to me, just the the penultimate game of what you guys did last year was the South Green game. Mm -hmm. I mean, you were heavy um, underdogs going to their place. They were very confident, very loose. Mm -hmm. The very beginning of that game, the very first play, uh, they throw a little pass and T.J. Meredith makes a big hit. Yep. How much has it hurt to not have T.J. Uh, setting tones and, and doing these type of things for you this year? Because I think you don't, you know, it's not making an excuse. It's just being real. Mm -hmm. uh, he kind of was a tone setter for your defense. Oh, there's no question. There's a lot of times where he comes flying down from that safety position to make a play, knock a – Knock somebody, knock the ball out uh, at the, you know, two yards down the field or whatever, and he just made a bunch of plays for us last year. So yeah, absolutely, we've missed him. The kids that have stepped in have played really, really well in that spot too, though. Uh, but yeah, we absolutely missed each other. So um, there, there have been there, there have been other challenges, but York is is certainly the biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. I, I look at it this way: if you can get a win this Friday night, then it's highly likely that. The first week of the playoffs, should you make it, and it, you know mm -hmm. you've got, you're in the driver's seat on that, that you won't have to go to the number one team in the state in Hampton. Is mm -hmm. that kind of part of what this is about? Friday night is to stay away from them, or you're just Coach May's doing a that. great job about uh, keeping this team focused on Friday night. You know, we got to be the best team Friday night, yeah. and that's what our focus is: is being the best team on the field this Friday night, and that's that's what we're trying to do. Everything else is going to work itself out 
and we're just going to go try to be the best team this Friday night. Coach May, like I said, that's our focus. Is there anything that you think maybe um, we as observers, announcers, fans, that we're not seeing, that we're just not getting, that we don't understand um, that that's going on with the team? I mean, that I know there's things you don't want to even talk about, right? You know, mm-hmm. you keep coaches secrets. But anything that you wish people would have a little more understanding about? I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know what's being said. <laughs> So uh, outside of the team, you know, I don't I, – I, once – you know, I, there's probably other people that have said this before, but once football season starts, I'm kind of much quieter on, you know, social media, looking at social media. And to be honest, there's not a lot of time to do that either. Uh, the focus is there. Yeah. No, I didn't mean anybody would say anything. I just meant even – you know, you haven't listened the, the, to me. I, I don't okay, know what fine. misconceptions might be. Yeah. Um, he's talking about Mark Matthews dogging your defense on Friday night. Oh, well, no, he did. No, I'm kidding. He doesn't. <laughs> no, he doesn't. No, I, I don't know. Just, I mean, you know, in when sometimes if you don't if you don't look at at the games, you just look at the numbers. The numbers don't always tell you what's going on. I mean, the number, the real number, is the two and two. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, do do you feel like there's a difference? Because when I look at this, I don't. It's hard for me to say. There's a difference in the two games that we lost and a difference in the two games that we won that I can just put my finger on. So we just got out of film study, and Coach May put a very fine point on this. You know, there are three or four plays in either game that's the difference between one and three, two and two, four and oh. There's a very fine margin. (coughs) My voice is about gone from this year. I'm sorry. Uh, There's a very fine margin between winning and losing, and you have to be – you have to execute at a very high level – to stay on the correct side of that line. Um, and we're two and two, and that's where we're at. And York, it's going to be 40 plays of – you have to – right? I yeah. mean, it's going to be They're a, very, a very team explosive. like that every play. They're very explosive. Yeah, they have a lot of, lot of team speed and very explosive team, and we absolutely have our work cut out for us. All right, Coach Martin, let, let me ask you one. You, you were at a JV game before you came here tonight. Yep. How was that game going? Uh, we were 0-0 in a very tough defensive battle, yeah, with with Campbell County. Okay, with yeah. Campbell County. Yeah. All right, and Coach Golden, before before we let you go, I want I want to go back to something you said about everybody on the team has to be able to tackle well, whether it be you know matter. And you you brought up kickers. How how well does your kicker tackle? <laughs> Work in progress still. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Hugo Henry has not missed a week, by the way. He's always here. He's faithful to be here. So we've got to get him on here at some point. Oh, yeah. And uh, But I just I, I wanted to check in on he's, that. He's working on it. Okay. All right, good deal. All right, Coach Golden, Coach Martin, thank you guys for stopping by thank and joining you. us. Good luck Friday night in these big region games. Appreciate it. All right, thank we'll you. take a break. When we come back, our legend of the game as we get set to close things out here from El Ray on the IHSN Roundtable. Welcome back to the IHSN Roundtable. We're live at El Rey. And before I turn this over to, to Tim Smith, I want to remind you that we've got a trivia question out there that has not been answered. So there's free food from El Rey on the table. And the question is, what coach at York Institute is a former coach at Oneida? It can be any, any sport, hey, coach or assistant coach. What coach at York Institute is a former coach at Oneida? Without saying it, do you know the answer? No. Okay, so it, I don't no, want to no, lose on a technicality again. No, <laughs> you were close. You were close. No one has got it yet. I thought it was going to be an easy question. Maybe it's not as easy as I thought. But if you know the answer, you can text us five three nine four six one six. Okay, it's time for our Black Cat Legend of the Game. We thank Black Cat for sponsoring this segment with us each week. Hope everybody got out to Music on Main this past Saturday. It was great. I got a chance to go down there. Did you have some chili? They, I did have some chili, some of the winning chili. And uh, then, uh, you know, I got to peruse the black cat. If you haven't done that, uh, you need to take some time and go do that. Uh, my my son loves vinyl records. They've got quite a selection there. And and they're, they're building this uh, history museum, Oneida History Museum. Like right now, it's just in a couple of cases, but you can go look at that. It's it's really neat, and so I'm looking forward to when they get the whole thing open. But yeah, thanks for the Black Cats bringing you the legends of the game. All right, so we've we've brought several legends so far. We had Bill Hall on, of course. He was he's a legend at both Oneida and Scott High. We had Mike Swain from Oneida last week. We we had uh, Harris Keaton from Scott High last week. So now we're gonna we're gonna slow it down just a little bit, and we're gonna start alternating it. So this week's gonna be Oneida. Next week's going to be Scott High. We don't know who that's going to be yet. We wouldn't tell if we well, didn't know. Neither do I, but, uh, but well, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have figure it out. Yeah. This week's Legend of the Game, 
former Oneida quarterback Stan Pennington and Tim. I just I had to ask you. Yes. I had to ask you before we went before we came back while we were in break when you started. Yeah. You started in 1990. Stan was a sophomore. Stan Tim has been doing this now. This is his 32nd year, so he's getting old. <laughs> Or 33, if you 30, do the correct Sorry, this, this, this is your 33rd yeah. year. Yes, I'm not a mathematician. My point, though, still stands, and that is Stan Pennington, you are getting old. Well, yes. Got a son who gra just graduated high school. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. First of all, it's a pleasure to be sitting here with Tim and Rick. Uh, they're the legends of Colin. I mean, I listened to them when I was in high school. I mean, listen to Tim call my own name even after the go. Listen to Rick call the Scott games and uh, – I don't think he had to, got to call one of my games, but luckily he got to call one of my son's games this past year. And mm -hmm. uh, Rick, thank you for the nice words and everything you said, and uh, really enjoyed listening to your call. I go, I go way back with your family. Uh, Luther and I used to play adult basketball. Huh. We used to keep adult leagues going, and uh, we played a lot of basketball. Oh, by the way, Dad did say you need to tell the score a little more often. <laughs> well, hey, he, don't worry, Rick, because he definitely told me that too. I, I've had people, times. I've had people for these thirty years say that, and finally, a friend of mine came up with. He says, "I understand why you don't give the score because Scott has behind." And I said, "Well, that does change the perspective a lot, you know." So, but thank you guys. Like I said, this listening to, to you guys it, it was always a pleasure and i still listen to this day so. well i'm sorry ben already broke our rule we weren't going to mention bill hall because he didn't mention you well and we've both been upset about that well you know, that's you know bill <laughs> no bill uh bill's the reason that got to own out of basketball back into it uh but the real i, I would have been thinking about this since we've talked and but you know, you talked about how the early 90s kind of spoiled yeah. Oneida. Yeah. I was thinking back, well, Tim Neville started Tim's Little Indians back when I was in the third grade. And that was kind of the first junior pro, I think, in the county maybe of, that I can remember. And I remember we had third, fourth, and fifth graders wore old football jerseys from the, Coach May had donated. And there's about my dad has a film in the old gym. There's students, kids sitting all the way down the wall across the stage. There's probably hmm. 50 kids, third through fifth grade, playing basketball. And Tim Neville, and I think my sixth grade year was the first year that there was a true junior pro league. I remember Steve Thompson and uh, Tom Lewis was my coach, and uh, that was the year I think I remember playing against. Kyle Keaton and all those from Scott and uh, and but then you know but I think that may have had a big part of why especially in basketball yeah it's why that the 90s kind of mm -hmm. got it for both because mm -hmm. Scott you had Derek Keaton Kyle Keaton yeah. you know and if right. Justin Keaton would have been you know still with the state you know and me and Derek always talked about if uh, at the one time when they were talking about consolidating high schools and you know, if you'd had Derek, Kyle, Justin, Troy Yaden, Rodney Dale, me on the same team with Jay Seals, Byron Billingsley, I mean, all those guys, yeah. what what could have been? Well, you know? I mean, you squeezed me and Rick out of a job. I know that. Well, uh, there probably wasn't a ball big enough, though, what I was thinking. <laughs> you just had to alternate. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right about that. Now, uh, so, and I don't want to mention this. Uh, you know, obviously, 92 – was the state championship in football. It's the 30-year anniversary. So I don't think it was a mystery we were going to try to get Stan on this year. The <laughs> question was when we were going to, when were we going to get him on? And he mentions Tim Neville donating his time and these, and these things. With the, When I called Stan to ask him if he could come be on this, he, he was half talking to me and half taking up money and tickets for Little League up in the Sevier County yeah, mm -hmm. for, for the Little League, donating his time. So, I mean, here's somebody who, who – recognizes and respects that people gave their time to him and he's given back on that and um and so that struck me when i was talking to you oh, well. but now let's get to some questions uh -huh. so now you talked about the basketball start when do, when was the first football start who was the coach uh as far as your middle, oh, middle, middle school, school? Yeah. well coach robert coach Wright, Wright. Yep. and uh dr tim west yeah i'm glad i didn't have his special <laughs> but uh no uh but but 
two to lead up to that. Coach Wright left after my seventh grade year. Yeah. And Coach Wright, I was devastated, so that you know that. But I, I hold Coach Wright in high regard, one of my favorite all-time people, coaches ever. Uh, but leading up our spring session, Coach May led it because we didn't have a coach. Yeah. And, and some of the football players that were seniors, I, I, I've been trying to rack my brain. Maybe, I mean, I, I, for some reason, I remember David Edwards because yeah. I guess he was, you know, one of the guys that you remember. Uh, so I think that was part of what helped lead us in because we had a special group. Uh, the 92 team, we had 11 starting players on offense had been together since basically the second, third grade. And we played football in the old black top parking lot up there in the school since the second, third grade mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was, I think that was a big factor. Because I, I you know, you said I'm the quarterback of that team. I, was, I never considered myself a good quarterback. I was a quarterback on a great team. Cause we, that's what we were, we're a team. Right. And uh, nobody cared who scored. Nobody cared who got the accolades. And, and the guys that didn't, the offensive linemen and Art D. I actually went back and looked, just trying to be prepared. Yeah. But our defense that year, that 22 points was the most points we give up in a game. It was against Livingston. We give up 21 against Greenback. And out of the other 13 games, nobody scored over 20. Yeah. So defense and our offensive line, because we averaged probably 235, 240. Yeah. On the offensive line. And Name them off. Big. Offensive line of the game. Jude Jeffers, David Payne, Teddy Carson, Patrick Chitwood, Robbie West, and Willie Bowett was yeah. our six. You know, David Payne was a senior, but he was but he could play all five positions. Yeah. And so those guys were the real reason. Because you had them big hosses up front. I mean, you know, we ran the ball. Yeah, you know, I heard Matthews the other night, you know, mm -hmm. throw me under the bus right. about yeah. bringing in seals to throw. Yeah, what yeah. about that? Yeah, Disgusting. I know. Imagine Matthews. Yeah. Gosh. But, uh, <laughs> but, you know, you didn't have to throw the ball when you run for 300 yards a game. Yeah. I threw 100 passes in 15 games. Six passes a game. And half of those were screens. Yeah. You know, and, you know but, like, I, I do remember that I would always tell Coach May that I said – Coach, we're going to throw it 25 times a night. He said, we are. I said, yeah, but 20 of them are in warm-ups. <laughs> so, uh, but he always liked to give me a hard time on that. But uh, but that was the real reason. I think that camaraderie and a lot – and four or five of our guys had older brothers that played at Oneida. And, you know, you, you want to outdo your brother. Yeah. I mean, you know, and, and like I said, Mark Matthews, Jeff Owens – you know, those guys, I remember those guys since I was little. Your brother, Stephen Yeah, my brother, Pennington, Stephen Pennington. Absolutely. And, uh, and that's another thing. It's, it's kind of a legacy deal with my family. You know, my dad played football and basketball. Of course, you know, they, I think in basketball his senior year, they went like 22-2 and two with Coach Doxson. And I think Tommy Perky was on that team, maybe MC Bowett, people like that. Had a real good team. And, and then – Coach May actually coached my sister in basketball, and, and I'm pretty sure that was one of the first years they went to the state tournament. Right. was Lisa Pennington and Paula Watson, mm -hmm. and I think Carrie Bullitt was a freshman that year. I'm pretty sure. Yep. Maybe. Maybe. It's, yeah. it's been a while. And, uh, well, then, like I said, my brother Stephen played for Coach May in football, and then I played for Coach May. My niece played at Oneida. My nephew played at Oneida, so it's yeah. kind of like a family deal, you know. Yeah. Now, uh, are you like a coach? Because I've always, I talk about this a lot. For some reason, I think about this a lot. Coaches, more than the wins, they remember the losses. Is there some, I mean, because you guys got close the two years before you got, you knocked down the door and got that state championship. You had a couple of disappointments those those two years before that you were contenders. Well, and I heard Mike Swain said 90, it was actually 89 when Jimmy that field goal kick. And it's funny because I was back behind the goal post too. And it it looks like it went straight over top of the goal upright. Right. But the official, but so I was a freshman. We went 12-2 and two that year against Donaldson Christian. But probably the loss, 
you know, we lost to Chad Pennington, I think, or it may, it may have been Brian Langley was quarterback at Webb then, uh, my sophomore year. But I lost three games as a starter, as a junior and a senior. And all three games were in overtime. <laughs> lost to Greenback in overtime in the second round of the playoffs on yeah. that muddy field. Yeah. You'd beat them in the year. Yeah, beat them during 31 to 30, probably one of the best games. Yeah. And then we lost to Cofield that same year in overtime. That's down 91. There. Yeah, 90. Yeah, 91. Yeah, 91, my junior year. Yeah. And then my senior year, we lost to Livingston. And, and actually, that game was probably the game that, hey, we need to focus. Because, you know, everybody knows the story of the can you see it, Coach May coming right. in and doing that. and But there was a – Coach May had changed a little. I mean, not saying – but he was tough. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had to follow Richard May, his own son, at quarterback. Yeah. I had Jimmy as my quarterback's coach. Yeah. No pressure, you yeah. know. <laughs> but uh, Coach May had loosened up a little, you know, and I think that was a big deal, you know. To me, that, that regular season game against Greenback your senior year – when in, instead of just going to the locker room right before halftime, he turned you loose to Mark Martin, who was here just a moment ago. <laughs> that, that play stands out to me. Well, that's that's probably – people will ask me what what's your fondest memory, and I guess that is my fondest memory of a play. You were still down. And, and, but yeah, we were down 21-10. to 10. Greenback just went in, and they kicked off with 20 seconds to go. And I think we returned it <laughs> to the 20. There's 12 seconds. I can remember it like it was yesterday. Returned it to the 20, 12 seconds to go, and we ran, a, we're in the veer. We ran a draw to Doug Pike, the fullback. And he gets 20 yards, but he gets knocked out of bounds at the 40 with four seconds to go. You know, if he gets knocked out of bounds, half's over. Yeah. But Coach May's like, and we'd kind of, Coach May had a knack of putting in a play here, there to use in a game. The Greenback game in the second round, my junior year, that Mud Bowl, we were down seven nothing. Well, we sent, we put it in on Thursday. I remember telling Kevin and Mel Akers, I, they used when they called the games back in the day. Yeah, I saw them at Walmart Thursday night before the game, and I said, "Hey, we put this play in, you know, just be on the lookout for this." And, and uh, we ran Shane Keaton in motion, which most of my passes went to Shane Keaton. Well, everybody went. Well, here's Anthony Sexton tied in. I remember the guy from Channel 6, I think it looks like Mike Dickia running down through there. But nobody. I mean, I just tossed it to him. He went like 70 yards for a touchdown. Yeah. And, but it was little plays. But we ran the exact same play except we sent Scott Owens on a flyer. I faked the draw, and Mark was running a backside post. And I pretty much just threw it to the middle of the field. And I didn't see him catch it. I'm – I get hit, I'm laying on the ground, and it's kind of one of those you roll over. And I see our stands going nuts. And I'm like, what happened? You know, and I get up, I finally see Mark Martin going across the uh, goal line. And I think that propelled us. You know, we end up coming back win 38-21. Yeah. That game. And, and, and that then you stretch, had to go back there. So. Yeah. Yeah, which was a raw deal. Right. We're – I think we're what twelve and one yeah. going to the fourth round of the playoffs. And they're nine or eight, nine and four, and we're having to go to Greenback. Yeah. We're but, not going to change that stand. Yeah. But listen, here here's the thing. So, was there ever a a, a game at, where you thought we're not going to get this, and you did? Because you're a pretty confident guy. That would you're about to surprise <laughs> me if you're going to answer this. But I want you to answer it honestly. Was there a game you thought I don't think we can do this? Well, that's that's funny. I was talking to somebody the other day that. I never, when I played, I never got nervous. An intimidating team. I'm not, though. and I, team? I can confirm the Bill Hall throwing up before every game. Yeah. Oh yeah, story. yeah, I can confirm that, and hopefully I can get to his technical story better than the one he did before I go. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I got more nervous before my son's games than yeah. I did mine. But maybe one time was. The game we was really wanting real bad was that Cofield game my senior year. Because they'd got you twice. They got us twice, and they had the shirts that said lightning strikes, and then the next year lightning strikes twice. Mm -hmm. Well, there may have been a rumor going around that some of the Oneida players 
had the Storm is Over shirts on underneath their jerseys during that game. I'm not going to confirm or deny those rumors, but uh, but that was a game we were really – and we dominated them. I mean, I think they ran eight plays in the second half. I mean, we, we just ran the ball – and offensive line dominated. And I, as I told a story when we were trying to get the stadium named after Coach May, it was the first time I'd ever shared it. I'd never even told Jimmy until he heard me tell it that night. Is I'm walking down to the old tunnel down there to the uh, underneath the old gym going to our locker room. Coach Chris from Cofield, Coach May are standing there talking. And I'm walking down, and old Coach Chris, of course, he's – He's a good guy. I mean, I love, yes. he, last time before he passed away, I'd seen him. And, you know, he gave me coach. a big, great coach. And he gave me a hug. Man, he said, man, we had some battles. And, but uh, he said, uh, Coach May, he said, if it had been a dry field tonight, it had been a different story. I never will forget. Coach May looked at him and goes, yeah. He said it had been 35 nothing. <laughs> and that's the first time. And Coach May so gave what me that, was the final? 14, 14 to nothing. nothing yeah. And Coach May gave me that wink as I was walking. <laughs> and that was the, the bond, kind of like, don't tell anybody I said that. But, you know, it, it, that was a side you'd never really seen of him. Right. He was not about being uh, – yeah. me and Mark Martin were talking about – you. Were, they were talking about this. Yeah. Well, against Dawson Christian, which you'll be doing, I think, coming up on your recap. And – uh we were, Mark catches a pass. I'm gonna throw him a, and he's on film going like that. Well, uh, everybody, we kind of got a little bit, you know. We thought this is our time, these yeah. next four games, four to four out of five games. And but Coach May reeled that back in. Yeah. He said, you know, act like you've been there. We're not gonna do this showboat stuff. Well, I, you know, and he's not here to defend himself, but he'd tell you, John Strunk, in a camp game, on one of Coach May's against one of Coach May's old teams. He caught a touchdown that he'd been John with a cornerback back and forth, and he bowed. I mean, there's nobody there to even see it. But the, the, and Coach May ran to the goal line to intercept him and tell him that wasn't going to happen anymore. <laughs> now, okay, Stan, so um, so state championship, bringing that home. I mean, it's still the only time on night won a state championship. Um, is that what people always – I mean, you are a basketball guy too, and we, maybe we'll have basketball – time yeah. later but i mean yeah, that's, what's uh, it like it just i mean that's what's associated with you guys yeah i mean it's just uh like i said i think it all started back with we had the great leadership our freshman year and you know, we had the vince owens you know was a senior captain that year uh ron keaton was on that team uh all those guys, you know, guys I played with, Jared Henry, Kevin Terry, yeah. guys, good role model guys. Mm -hmm. And, and but then we had the mean guys. You know, Mark Canfield was on that team yeah. my freshman year. And, you know, but those guys showed us the leadership mm -hmm. to get to where I think. So it was as much about them. Yeah. I mean, you, what yeah. they and instilled in you guys. That's the thing, you know, and, you know, we got down, well, you talk about the game that we got down. I mean, the championship game, we're down 10 to nothing, and we've run one play. Yeah. You know, that was Doug Pock fumbled. No, me and Doug argued back and forth on that first play. After well, he's they, not here to defend I know. Well, that's why I say it's on Doug. But, no, no, Doug Doug will tell you it was his fault, and I always tell you it's my fault. But, we, but you know, they drove 80 yards and scored 7 nothing. Mm -hmm. First play, we do the – we're running the veer, and – uh well, we fumbled, me and Doug, and they recover. But the defense stood and held them and kicked the field. But we're down 10 to nothing in the first quarter of the state championship game. And you're kind of like, oh. And, uh, but that just shows the resilience. I, I probably played the worst I've ever played, probably as far as reading the option, because they were doing something. I mean, they were basically putting 10 in the box. And, you know, they had some college players and, that went on to college, right. and uh, but uh, Byron Mills made the interception right before halftime and threw the fade. The mark made a heck of a catch in the back of the end zone, toe tap back there, and then you know I, I kind of remember getting a little. I remember walking by our fans and said, "They're gonna have to score more than ten to beat us." Mm -hmm. I mean, I think, but then we come out and drove and scored that, that little middle uh, fullback screen to Doug, who got a, the Franco Harris immaculate reception. Right. If you watch it, yes. It, 
it's hard to tell. Hard to pick up. Yes. Yeah, and uh, we score, but then it was just a battle. And but Josh Thompson, you know, made the the play of oh, not a history probably right. wrestling. You know, Josh maybe five ten, buck sixty, and OJ Fleming six four one eighty five one ninety five. Van went on to going play on Vanderbilt, to Vanderbilt, and uh, wrestles it away from yeah. him. And the, the countdown of that clock. I mean, you just couldn't imagine, but. You know, somebody said there was a sign in Oneida that said, life won't leave, turn the lights off. Yeah. Because I've never seen, uh, probably the most people have ever been to a Class A, you know, game. Yeah. And, but the, the parade through town when we come back was a memory. But my fondest memory, and matter of fact, I was going through my old scrapbook and that my mom had made for me. I got to mention my mom since I mentioned everybody else. And says I'm the reason that she had to get knee replacement because she had to walk up down the bleachers all these years. <laughs> Probably true. <laughs> but about a week later, we go to the junior high or the elementary school, and they set up tables, and we're signing autographs for the little kids in elementary. And that that means more to me than the, I saw that picture, and it's actually there. And that, that, that was just so surreal, I guess, just thinking that those – I wish I could remember who it was because a few years ago when I come to a game, one of the – I was in elementary school. I got your autograph. Yeah. And I was like, man, that, that, that's cool. Now, I'm going to have to accelerate. We're going to have to get you okay. back for basketball, okay? okay? So, I got I got, I got to ask you one more thing – a couple more things. So, you you went on to Maryville to play basketball. Right. Right? But uh, you weren't as busy during football season, so you decided to go into competition against me and Mark. You joined forces – with Kevin Akers and Mel Akers to work against us. That's what Mark's whole thing is about, just so you know. That's okay. why he's – but now – Well, so, that ain't all what's wrong with Mark. Well, you're right. So, <laughs> he's a Cowboy fan. Well, but anyway, easy. no offense. Now, so uh, – but you go into this unholy alliance with Kevin Akers and the, and the broadcasting thing. And so – but you're doing – what about – I'm going to ask you this question. 1994, that team had to move to 2A – in 93, mm -hmm. only lost three games, picked, finished, you know, sixth. And then two years after your alls, they're undefeated going into the state semifinals. Would that team, if it had stayed in single A, would it have won the yes, state? That, no doubt. I think, I mean, it could have been two or three more. Here comes a harder question. Theoretically, 92, 94, play each other. I mean, you got some of the same players, right? Key players: yeah, yeah. Phil Meredith, Cully Phillips, all these guys. Jason Pike. They're on the same. What? You don't Seriously? even want. To, you don't have to answer that. You know, I'll answer it. Ninety-two. Ninety-two. <laughs> uh, I'll, by offensive line. Default. Offensive line. Oh, offensive line. I don't. I don't think any off. I mean, I, I'll stack up those six guys with any offensive line that's come through. Oh, yeah. I mean, I they mean, took. They took down Alcoa. Yeah. Well, Sweetwater. That was Alcoa. Yeah. Chad That's because I was Chad Pennington. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a fair question. Yeah, it is. It'd have been a good game. Yeah, it would be. Stan, we've got three minutes. Can, <laughs> don't want to leave anybody hanging. Yeah. You you brought up the Bill Hall story. Can you tell that story? In, oh in three well, minutes? this is when he was talking about the hanging his hanging himself with his tie. I think I was a junior, and we're playing York at home, and it getting a little chippy. Of course, so Spencer Beatty from York. I'm still friend. I'm friends with him this today, and we always talk, but. It's getting a little chippy out there. We're getting it's getting emotional, you know. I was probably a little emotional guy back in basketball season, and uh, well, we're down there underneath the locker room. Well, here comes this trash can, comes flying down, and this coach Hall he kicked it or something, and he, guys, you got to keep your composure. You can't get, you got to stay calm. You can't get all worked up. You got to stay. <laughs> Sorry about technical guys, <laughs> 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 but no, basketball was the. I'm just as proud as that of the oh, yeah. first time since 1929 that we went to the state tournament. Mm. It's just as much as that state championship in football. Yeah. I mean, that, like I said, I'm a basketball guy, but, you know, that was, that meant a lot to me because that was probably the first year that we'd ever won the regular season district, the district tournament, and the region tournament, and then won the sub-state game and, yeah. and made it, and, you know, that, that sticks out to me. And if we went to Drew Pickett County first round game, it may have been a little different. And the fun fact of that, if we'd have made it to the finals, we would have played BGA for the championship. 
I yeah. think, is the way it worked. Because I think they won it in basketball that year. Yeah. All right, so before you slide away from here, we, we've talked so much about the games that are coming up this weekend, and there's not really much more that we can say about that other than just to remind everybody that they're coming up Friday night. Oh, not a host York. Scott goes to Carter. We'll do something. I'll ask all three of you guys to pick winners in those games if you want to. And if, if you want to bow out, you, either of you guys can bow out. You can't bow out, Stan. We're not giving you that option. And so let's start with Scott High and Carter and Rick Scott has had good crowds everywhere that they've, whether they've been at home or on the road at South Dole, they've had good crowds. There'll be a good crowd at Carter Friday night. Uh, it's seven o'clock start in that game. Who do you, who do you like in that game? Is it at Carter. It's at Carter. I don't like Carter. I'm going to go with Scott. Okay. <laughs> See, that's me. Um, I, was, I told Ben a while ago, I said I would, I would go opposite of what Katie and Chloe in their predictions <laughs> with both games. So that means that. I'll pick the Highlanders. We're going to win a game. Why can't he be this week? And, and maybe it seems – maybe it's a little bit weird to be saying – when you're still looking for your first win to say – to talk about playoffs. But the playoffs are the goal for every high school team. And if you're Scott High, this game Friday night, if you want to make the playoffs, you've got to win Friday night. That's right. Carter. Okay. I don't get to pick it? Go ahead. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm going to go with Scott High. I went – I was there Friday night. And, and you know, I understand – what what happened? What Coach Golden was talking about, and and I understand, you know, this program, it's it's got uh, stops and starts going on right now. There's like South Doyle game. What about that? I mean, you weren't expecting that, mm -hmm. and then you weren't expecting this Friday night against Austin East. I just uh, I like your coaching staff, and I like uh, you know it's going to take a little time when you got a brand new coaching staff. Yeah. Going to take a little time. I think this is the week. Well, don't forget, I said I would go opposite of what they did. I pick Onada. Okay. Knock on wood, no bad luck or anything. Right. So so let's talk about that one. Oneida and York, Friday night. We talked about the crowd that will be in East Knoxville, Strawberry Plains for the Scott High game. If you're an Oneida person and, and you're oh, yeah. in Oneida, I mean, if you can't, you got to get out Friday night because yes. this is a huge, huge game Friday night. 8 o'clock start. It's uh, – what, what, what do we call it? The Battle of the Gorge, I think, is the unofficial name yeah. for this. And I think it was, yeah. So, yeah, Oneida and York Friday night. Much, much improved York team with Derwin, with Derwin right back at the helm. Who do you like in that game? You know I'm a homer. There you go, brother. <laughs> I've only cheered against Oneida one time in my entire life, and that was this past year at the Christmas tournament when my son played against them. <laughs> and that was the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life. But Oneida, I bleed orange. And, and I know you're taking Oneida. Yes, sir. You're going to take Oneida, too. I mean, you know, Coach May would, would yeah, tell that, you that. That would be uncomfortable, would it? He would tell you this. No, I'm talking about oh. uh, Coach May Sr. Oh. Uh, poor, you know, uh, it would be like, if you were at Notre Dame and saying we're going to play Marshall this week, and Marshall's the greatest – oh, yeah. That reminds me. Marshall did do it, right? So, no, I, I think this is a great matchup. Uh, I think so much is on the line. I love our coaches. Uh, and and I think Onada's going to get this one, uh, and I think it's going to be really close like they all have been. Uh, and so I think Onada's going to, going to get York, but they're going to have to work harder than they've worked in the first four games to secure this, and they will. All right, should be a great Friday night of football. And a reminder for you, we will have both games. Pre-game, Baby J's pre-game report from Carter will start at 620. And then just at the, as Scott and Carter are kicking off, you guys will be starting with a Baby J's pre-game report from Dr. Emmy Thompson Field as Oneida hosts York. Also, we're going to remind you next week is homecoming for both Scott High and Oneida. Weather permitting, next Monday night we will do this from now, you won't be there, Tim Smith. That's correct. Kevin Akers will stand that's in, in, in in your place. Tim's going to let work interfere uh, oh, for the next couple of weeks, and that's understandable. Next Monday night, weather permitting, we will do this live from Scott High. It's their big student bonfire night, and I've been told, Rick, that there may be some other surprises coming next Monday night. So I, I don't know if anything is They don't tell us yet. anything till we get there. So. Well, it, it, it should be fun if it all pans out. And, of course, again, everything is weather permitting. Homecoming next week for Oneida as well. We've we got uh, a big homecoming parade coming up next Friday. We'll be covering that as well. So something a little different and extra for both teams next week. Until Friday night, thank you for joining us, and good luck to both the Highlanders and the Indians, and good night.